Thank you. Um, our next speaker is Andrew Favreau. He's a husband and father. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to echo some of the comments that have been made already, um, talking about how we got here and some of the reasons that that I am here today, and I think a lot of you are as well. And you know, as, as Angus talked about, we've been lied to, and it's a pattern. It's a pattern that's been going on for decades. Um, the Af Afghan papers were released by the Washington Post last month talking about uh, systematic lying about what was happening in, in Afghanistan. We, you know, we, we supposedly invaded Afghanistan because of Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda. They quickly fled. The mission quickly morphed into an endless war with the Taliban and the citizens of Afghanistan who, re who didn't want to live under U.S. military rule. Osama bin Laden was supported by the U.S. in the 80s in the war in Afghanistan against the Soviet Union. And before that, the U.S. goaded the Soviet Union into that war in Afghanistan by supporting factions in Afghanistan that were in opposition to the Soviet Union. Bush Sr. lied about babies in incubators being removed from incubators. That was justification to go to war with Iraq in the first Gulf War. That was, that was a lie. They killed over 100,000 Iraqis in that war as they bombed in a massive bombing campaign and took out infrastructure as well as much of the military of Iraq. Bill Clinton instituted an embargo that led to deaths of hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. Madeleine Albright told Diane Sawyer that it was worth it. That's psychotic. Bush Jr. lied to us about WNDs in, June, in, in Iraq leading to an invasion that cost trillions of dollars and got over a million Iraqis killed in the chaos that followed. We've been bombing and intervening in Iraq for 30, or for 30 years. The average age in Iraq is 20. In America, it's 38. It's a direct result of all that chaos that we have been a that the United States has been a very big part of that entire time. And that was after helping Saddam Hussein come into power because he was in opposition to what was happening with people that wanted to be, wanted to nationalize the oil in Iraq and be more in line with the Soviet Union. They, they, we supported Saddam Hussein after the Iran, Iranian Revolution, which was after the U.S. supported a dictator in Iran, the Shah, for two decades, which was after the U.S ousted the, Iranian, the democratically elected leader of Iran in the 50s. This is a pattern that just keeps going on and on. So why? Why does administration after administration continue the same pattern? The pattern is about money, resources, power, and empire. It is systemic. It's institutional. It's cultural. We have to break it. We have to change the way we treat things. The U.S. has been a long history of supporting dictators, authoritarians, and thugs while overthrowing governments deemed too far to the left. Any country that wants to nationalize their natural resources or share that wealth with its own people instantly becomes the United States, an enemy of the United States government and money and interest who the individuals and institutions of the D.C. ultimately serve. Some of the most resource-rich countries, regions, and countries in the world have some of the poorest people and are often the most unstable. It's not by accident or coincidence. So we're here today around, and around the country and around the world to call for an end to this cycle. To call, this is a call to action. We must get informed, stay informed, and stay active. We must protest and make our voices heard. We must talk with our friends, relatives, neighbors in order to grow our numbers. We must contact our legislators, whether they be Democratic, Republican, Independent, or otherwise, and demand an end to U.S. wars of aggression. We must vote in primaries and general elections for candidates in, committed to diplomacy and ending endless war. We must demand an end to U.S. Intervention, interventions that create unnecessary hardship and death. We must demand our tax dollars and countless hours of human capital be repurposed towards activities that add value and true security to our lives. Peace does not come with the point of a gun or a drone bomb. Peace and prosperity come from mutual cooperation and shared benefit. Let's imagine that world. Thank you.